Welcome back to the Alice Stewart Show on 96.5 The Voice. Welcome back to the Alice Stewart Show, 734 here on a fine Thursday. As we roll in closer into this election season, we're hearing a lot of plans and proposals from uh, various candidates and Democratic gubernatorial candidate Mike Ross uh, unveiled yesterday something that uh, is critical for folks uh, across the state income taxes. And he has proposed a five hundred seventy five million dollar income tax plan for state income taxes. He says it would uh, be implemented gradually uh, if he were to be elected governor. Uh, co- former Congressman Mike Ross joins us in studio. Good morning. Great to have you here. Hey, Alice. It's great to be with you. Thanks for having me. Well, I'm glad you could join us. This is a it's a big plan. It's a very ambitious plan, but this is a, your first big policy proposal. Of all the, the issues out there for folks in, in the state of Arkansas, why is it you chose to address the state income tax? Because I think our, our state income tax uh, uh, bracket system is is unfair. Uh, we need lower taxes. We need fair taxes, and that's what I try to accomplish here. You see, the 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 income tax brackets that were established back in 1971 were not indexed for inflation. So right. when they were written in 71, the the median household in- income in Arkansas was eight thousand dollars a year. Well, today it's forty thousand dollars a year. So you know, in 1971, when it was written, I mean, the average uh, taxpayer in 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 Arkansas was was paying about two and a half percent, but now they're they're making forty thousand a year. Uh, the brackets didn't go up. We didn't stretch the incomes within each percent that you pay uh, until nineteen ninety six. And so for that twenty five year period, uh, as a result of that, you know, someone that was paying, gosh, uh, you know, eight thousand dollars in nineteen seventy one was 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 three and a half percent, and now they're making forty thousand dollars a year, and they're paying seven percent. And you know what really stands out to me. Is is that that one in three taxpayers in Arkansas are are in the the top tax bracket being taxed at at seven percent, so right. to drop to six point nine percent because of changes made by the General Assembly uh, last year, and uh, in fact fifty nine percent. Even though we have six income tax brackets, fifty nine percent of the hardworking folks in Arkansas are being taxed at the top two rates. Only 25% are in the bottom three rates. My plan will change that to where you'll have 14% in the top rate instead of 37%. 28% will be in the top two rates versus 59%. And 55% will be in the bottom three rates instead of 25% like it, like it, like it is today. The bottom line is this, and this is, this is why this is so important. A single mom working two jobs, trying to make ends meet, earning $34,000 a year, is paying the same a top end seven percent state income tax rate as a family making three hundred and forty thousand dollars a year. Uh, there's nothing nothing fair about it, and so I want to bring fairness to the tax code. Actually, in 1997, Governor BB and me and 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 others in the state legislature, in 1997, we actually passed a law that recognized uh, this problem. Um, and, and we started indexing the state income tax rates for inflation beginning in 1997. It was Act 328 of, of 1997. But we didn't go back and look at the 25 years prior to that. Right. So that's what I do. Basically, I say, let's go back to 1971. This has been a problem 43 years in the making. Let's go back to 71. Let's index the brackets for inflation with a 3% cap. If you do that, uh, then you bring a lot more fairness to where uh, the top bracket doesn't start to 75100 a year. And what's important here, no one's taxes go up, not a single penny, and everyone, everyone gets a tax break under my plan. Uh, for those that make over $75,100, obviously they're still, they re- realize the savings on the first 75100 because we have marginal tax rates. Uh, so. I, I think one of the keys to, to this plan is that it's, it's more specific in terms of the various income brackets, and you you very clearly define the various income brackets, and it incrementally goes up, uh, and the income tax rate is is adjusted accordingly. And it, it is shocking to me that it hasn't been changed in, in so many years, uh, seventy nine or ninety seven being the the last major change. And and the key is obviously when when this is rolled out, there's concerns uh, or uh, the opposition. Uh, comes rolling out of the gate. You mean I have opposition? Surely not. Uh, believe it or not, there's, there's, you have a challenger. I have three uh, y- challengers. You're, you're home free on the Democratic. In the, you in mean the they primary. haven't endorsed this plan? <laughs> they're, they're not for cutting 
Taxes for working families? I haven't seen that. You're home free in the primary. However, in the general, there's uh, three challengers. Asa Hutchinson has also rolled out an income tax plan, and and he has... Uh, says that uh, his plan is better suited for the state of Arkansas, given that he's got a, a he's been critical of yours in that you have no specific uh, timeline and time frame for action and how this will work out. And of course, uh, uh, Asa Hutchinson says that his plan is better. It focuses on more competitive rates for Arkansas. There's been a lot of folks uh, on the Republicans that say you don't have a specific timeline for implementing your plan. Well, I mean, look, Asa, nice guy, career politician and lobbyist. Um, uh, he's been running statewide for 28 years. Uh, hadn't won yet, but this is his fourth attempt at statewide office in, in 28 years. I would expect him to attack this plan. Ironically, his attack on my plan is identical, if you go back and look, to the attack he leveled on Governor Beebe's plan to remove the sales tax on groceries in the 2006 campaign. Back then, Asa Hutchinson said, we're going to take the sales tax off groceries in year one. And that was in 2007. We all know what happened later in 2007 and 2008 with the worst economic recession since World War II. Had we done that, we would not have been one of four states in America with a balanced budget, uh, debt-free, and we would still be trying to recover from the, the massive layoffs of, of, of teachers, uh, police officers, uh, and, and all the things that would have come with that. Governor Beebe said in 2006... In that campaign, he says we're going to take the sales tax off groceries. That was a big, that was a big bold policy initiative. It cost one billion dollars with a B, uh, and and but he said we're going to do it in a fiscally responsible way. We're going to do it as we can afford it. We're going to do it with revenue growth. And at the time, Asa said it will never happen. And guess what? Eighty percent of the sales tax on groceries has been removed during the time that Mike Beebe has been governor. So it's the same attack that that he leveled against Governor Beebe in '06. I'm not surprised by it. But my plan is being fiscally responsible. Um, you know, Asa and others keep talking about surpluses. Well, surpluses are a one-time event. You don't do permanent spending or permanent tax cuts with a one-year surplus. I was in the state Senate. I understand how state government works. You, you do it with revenue growth. And as we have revenue growth, we're going to balance the budget first. We're going to fund education, Medicaid, public safety. And then uh, with, with revenue growth and what's left, after we do those things, we're going to give hardworking taxpayers some of their money back. Basically, you know, when you run for office, you got to have a vision, you got to have a plan, and you got to establish your priorities. This is my priority, is to create fairness in our income tax code during the eight years that I hope to be governor. And, and as you know, in the state legislature, they are bound and they have the responsibility to have a balanced budget every year. They have to pay the bills, and they, they it's not the federal government where you can just keep uh, putting things Absolutely. on the credit card. So the the question is, how do you plan to, to pay for these tax cuts? You've mentioned... Uh, doing so over time through economic growth, but specifically, how, how is this going exactly to be? Exactly the same way that we paid for taking the sales tax off groceries as we have revenue growth. And we're forecast to have about two, you know, the FY15 uh, fiscal forecast, forecast is out, and, and we're looking at about 2% revenue growth next year. We've got some, some needs we gotta got to meet and as it relates to education, Medicaid, public safety. Um, and, and so, you know, that's for FY15. My plan would be an FY16. Uh, about this time next year, uh, DFNA will be giving us the FY16 forecast. We'll go through the budget process. I'll work with Democrats and Republicans uh, to begin to implement this plan. I would like to begin with those who need it the most, uh, the lowest income working people in this, in this state. And look, you know, uh, I'm not, uh, all these numbers over the radio, I know people are probably getting kind of, kind of, uh, it's hard to understand without looking at these charts, but the bottom line is this. If you make 30000 a year, you're going to save $465 a year. If you make 40000 a year, you're going to pay $665 a year in less taxes. 50000 a year, you'll pay $880 less in taxes. And if you make $75,100 and up, uh, you'll save $1,148 in taxes. The bottom line is this, Alice. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm a conservative, pro-business Democrat in the in the in the in the mode of, of Mike BB and I'm not running to be governor for the Democratic Party I'm not running to be governor for the Republican Party I'm fed up with the extremes on both sides uh, I'm sick and tired of all the partisan bickering I'm running to be governor for the state of Arkansas for all the people in Arkansas and I pledge to work with everyone Democrat Republican independent green whatever you want to call yourself as long as you want to join me 
in improving the quality of life and building a better state and a better future for our people. Well, one thing's for sure, folks across the state will uh, all agree that we do want a lower uh, state income tax. And however we go about doing it, something that does need to be addressed. Clearly, with the uh, two candidates for governor addressing this, putting out a plan that's clearly on the minds of the people of Arkansas. So uh, we will uh, hash through the details and the specifics of that. But uh, Congressman Mike Ross, we appreciate you coming in. Uh, discussing your plan, and I'm sure we will uh, talk more as the race for Arkansas governor continues. It's a comprehensive detailed plan. It's uh, 11 pages. We lay it all out with graphs. You can find it at MikeRoss.com. All right. Thank you so much. Thanks, Alice. Great to be with you. Great to have you here. Have a great day. We're going to take a break. House Speaker Davey Carter comes up after the break to talk about the upcoming fiscal session in the Arkansas legislature. This segment of the Alice Stewart Show is brought to you by Arrow Plumbing. For all of your household or business needs, call Arrow Plumbing, 1-866-PLUMBER. We'll be back after this. The Alice Stewart Show on 96.5.